Now this is an example on differentiation and finding equations of normals to a particular curve. And if you'd like to try it, that'd be good. And you can always fast forward to any of the work solutions if you want to check your working. Okay, so what we've got here is the curve C. It has an equation y equals a half x cubed minus 9x to the power 3 over 2 plus 8 over x plus 30 where x is greater than 0. And in the first part we've got to find dy dx. Well first of all I'd want to make sure that all my terms were of the form ax to the power n and it's this one that isn't so I need to change it. So what we've got first of all is that y equals, we'll copy the first few terms down, We've got a half x cubed minus 9x to the power 3 over 2 and then plus 8 over x and it's this term that we need to change. Think of this as 8 times 1 over x and 1 over x is x to the power minus 1 so it becomes plus 8x to the power minus 1. A basic indices rule. And then we've got the plus 30. So we can now differentiate in the usual way when we differentiate any terms like this with respect to x we just multiply the power with the number in the front here and then reduce the power by 1. So we're going to have for the first term 3 times a half is 3 over 2. It's better written like that than, rather than 1 and a half. And then subtract 1 from the power so that's x to the power 2. Same again here. We do minus 9 times the power, 3 over 2. So that's going to be minus 27 over 2. And then we reduce the power of x by 1. So it's x to the power a half. For this one here, minus 1 times 8 is going to give me minus 8. Then reduce the power by 1. So that's now x to the power minus 2. As for the constant, 30, well when you differentiate a constant that always goes to 0. So just need to tidy this up now. We've got therefore dy by dx equals, the first term can stay as 3 over 2 x to the power 2. Second term, that doesn't change, that's 27 over 2 x to the power half. But for this one, x to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over x squared. And so minus 8 times 1 over x squared is just going to give me minus 8 over x squared. OK, so there's our answer then for dy by dx. Now for part b, we've just got to show that the point p with coordinates 4 minus 8 lies on the curve c. And in order to do this, all I need to do is substitute x equals 4 into here and hopefully we'll find that y turns out to be the minus 8. So that's where we're going with this one. Let's say that when x equals 4, then if we substitute it in the equation for y, we end up with y equaling a half of x cubed. So that's going to be a half of 4 cubed. And then we've got minus 9 times x to the power 3 over 2. So that's 9 multiplied by 4 to the power 3 over 2. And then we have plus 8 over x. So that's going to be plus 8 over 4. And then plus the 30 on the end. So what does this come to? Well, 4 cubed is 64. Half of 64 is 32. 4 to the power 3 over 2. Well, this means because of the 2, we square root the 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. We then go on to cube it. 2 cubed is 8. And then we have minus 9 times 8, which is minus 72. And 8 divided by 4, well, that's 2. And then we've got plus the 30 on the end. And 32 minus 72 plus 2 plus 30. That comes to minus 8. So therefore, we can say that P lies on C. Alright? Now in part C, 
we've got to find an equation of the normal to the curve C at the point P, giving your answer in this form, AX plus BY plus C equals naught, where A, B and C are integers. Well, how do we do this? Well, first of all, I need to think about getting the gradient of the curve at the point P. And to get the gradient of a curve, all I need to do is substitute x equals 4, because that's the x coordinate at P, into the gradient of the curve, which is given by dy by dx. This will give us the gradient of the tangent at P. So we'll just put this in that when x equals 4, we've got dy by dx, which gives the gradient of the tangent at this point, is going to be 3 over 2 times 4 squared. Let's just put that in. 3 over 2 times 4 to the power 2. And then we've got minus 27 over 2 minus 27 over 2, multiplied by x to the power half, so that's 4 to the power half, and then minus 8 over x squared, minus 8 over 4 squared. And so what's this going to give us? Well, 4 squared is 16, half of 16 is 8, 8 threes are 24. And then we've got 4 to the power half, in other words, the square root of 4, which is 2, divide it by 2, that's 1, and then times by the minus 27, so that gives us minus 27. And 8 divided by 16, 4 squared is 16, gives us a half, so we minus a half. And what does this come to? Well, it comes to minus 3.5, and, and it's best to keep that as minus 7 over 2. So there's the gradient of the tangent at the point P. So we should know that the perpendicular gradient, the gradient for the normal, okay, the gradient of the normal, let's just write that in, it's given by the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the normals must be, to reciprocate this, that will be minus 2 sevenths, but then we take the negative of that, so it's going to be just simply plus 2 sevenths. So there's our gradient of our normal. So the equation for our normal, well, we can use the version y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. So therefore, the equation of the normal, just give an intro for this. Equation of normal, all right, we'll say at p is, and what is it going to be? Well, as I say, it'll be y minus y1, We've got our point that the normal goes through. It's 4 minus 8, so the y coordinate will be minus 8. Equals m, the gradient, which is the gradient of the normal, 2 sevenths, multiplied by x minus x1, which is this point p. Its x coordinate there is 4. Now, what we need to do now is to get this into this form is get rid of the fraction, the 7. So we multiply through both sides by 7. So we're therefore going to have 7y. This is plus 8, so when you multiply that term with 7, you're going to get 8 7s, which are 56. Multiplying all this term here by 7 just means that it leaves us with 2 bracket x minus 4. Expand 2 bracket x minus 4 and you get 2x minus 8. So to put it then into this form, starting with the x term, then I'm going to just have the 2x. I now need to subtract 7y from both sides, so we have minus 7y, and I need to subtract 56 from both sides, so minus 8 minus another 56 is minus 64, and that's going to equal 0. So that is in that format. A would be the 2, B would be minus 7, and C would be minus 64, if we were asked to state the values of A, B, and C, which we're not. Okay, so I hope it's given you some idea then how to go about that question.